Hey friends, welcome back to Minute Rockets. Today we're going to be looking at the machining of the nozzle for our KNSB sugar motor. So here's just a couple of pictures of the nozzle and you can see there that the part that's inside the motor is quite a bit like the closure that we made last time. And then of course you have the exit of the nozzle and the bell that will hang out the back of the motor where the gases will exit. So we're going to start here with the length of 303 stainless steel bar stock and this is one and a half inch diameter bar stock and there's no way I was going to try cutting this in my little wooden bandsaw like I did the aluminum and so I'm setting it up here in a vise and we'll be cutting it off with an angle grinder and our nozzle is a little bit less than two inches long so I am cutting off a two inch piece that'll leave us a little extra that we can face off on the lathe and get the exact length we want on the lathe. And this is a 12 inch long piece of stainless steel. So I can get five nozzles out of this one piece. And the angle grinder actually did a pretty good job of cutting through this. I had to be pretty careful and go fairly slow because it's not as precise and I had to make sure that the angle grinder didn't kick back on me but just was careful and took it slow and gradually got through it. It didn't actually take that long, just a few minutes. Um, it helped when I got halfway through to turn the piece of steel around and cut from the other side. That way I didn't bind the saw in the slot that I was cutting and I was able to, to cut through it no problem. Now I don't think that this method would work for aluminum. Um, angle grinders or grinders in general I don't think work very well on aluminum or non-ferrous metals. They tend to gum them up and clog the abrasive wheel in my experience. So for the aluminum I'll be sticking to the bandsaw but for this steel this grinder worked really well. So just getting to the end here cutting through the the last bit in the middle of that bar. And now we have our piece of steel that we'll be using for our nozzles. So here's about a two inch long one and a half inch diameter stainless steel 303 bar that we can use and that will be the stock for our nozzle. So now we're ready to go ahead and get started machining and as usual I like to take a copy of the drawing and tape it to the headstock of the lathe. That way it's there and I can refer to it through the whole process of machining the nozzle. So now we'll get our stock chucked up in the lathe and we're just going to start off taking a facing cut off the end of it. And this is just to clean up the rough end that we had from our cut for, with that angle grinder and just get everything square and, and flush on this end. Uh, obviously the steel was more difficult to cut than the aluminum. Had to go a little bit slower and take not as deep a cut, but it did okay. I used WD-40 again as the cutting fluid. Probably would have been better to use actual cutting oil, but WD-40 is what I had on hand, so that's what I used. In the final pass here to get these, the end cleaned up. And this isn't super critical either because most of this is going to be cut away since this is the exit of the nozzle. But just getting it cleaned up and faced off. And now we'll drill the hole for our nozzle. So we're going to do this operation first. That'll give us a reference to the center of the nozzle and also it'll remove the central part of the bar and that'll make the machining easier. So I think it makes sense just to start with the the hole in the middle. So starting off just with the center drill here so we can have our drill bit centered and we're going to be using a 1964 drill bit that's the throat size that we want for this nozzle and just measuring the bit there to make sure that it's long enough to go all the way through and again using the WD-40 as the cutting oil. Just going slow here taking small cuts. With these drill bits you want to be careful not to get the drill bit too hot where it can lose its heat treatment on the end and then they don't really cut anymore so just taking it slow clearing the chips until we get all the way through the nozzle here and drill this this hole clear through and that'll give us a starting point for the rest of the cuts we're going to make so that should do it for our through hole so we'll just get the drill bit out of there and clean things up with a little compressed air and ready to move on with the rest of our cuts so here I'm just measuring the length of the divergent bell of the nozzle. So what we're going to do first is just machine that down to the, the outside diameter of the bell. And that's going to give us a shoulder that we can turn it around and hold that in our lathe while we machine the parts that 
are going to go inside the motor. So the forward part that will have the o-ring groove and the step for the liner. So this is just to get the back end of the nozzle machined down a little bit and get some of the material removed there. So now that we have that machine there on the back end, we'll flip it around and check it back up so we can start working on the forward end of the nozzle. So here we're just turning down the diameter, getting it to the diameter we need so that it'll fit inside our case and be a good fit before we uh, start turning the grooves for the liner and the o-ring. So now that we have down to the diameter we want, just doing a quick scotch right polish there and then final check on the diameter and that diameter is looking good and so now we'll start marking for the first the length um, so facing off the length of the front end of the nozzle just taking a couple of quick cuts here to to get it at the right length so now that we've got things to the right length we'll go ahead and start laying out our lines for first our shoulder that will hold the liner so set our length there and then just use our caliper here to scratch a mark and that's how long our liner shoulder is going to be and so we'll just start cutting that shoulder and similar to the forward closure this uh, shoulder here is dimensionally one of the most critical parts of our nozzle because this is going to seal the hot gases from going around the liner and getting to the case and so we want to have a good fit here so we'll make light cuts and check the diameter often so we can make sure that we don't get it too small. If you get it too small then you'll have a loose fit with the liner and you want to have a nice tight fit. So the diameter is looking good here, really close to the number we're looking for. So just doing some filing here to file a little chamfer on the front so that we can slide our liner on a little easier and just as we usually do cleaning up the corners and then using a scotch right pad to polish that surface and then test fitting a liner it looks good so now we'll set the spacing for our groove for that one I just set the caliper to the right amount and then put the cutoff tool in the right spot with the caliper and then started machining from there that way I didn't have to use any layout or make any scratches that was not necessary for this one since I could just put the tool right where I want it so again same as in the forward closure just cutting the groove here for our o-ring and that will be used to seal the motor on the nozzle end and the diameter of this groove is pretty critical too you want to make sure that it's not too small that the o-ring is gonna not seal and you don't want it to be so large that you can't get the o-ring into the case once there's no ring on there uh, the width of the groove is less critical you just need it to be wide enough to contain the o-ring and allow the o-ring to expand side to side as it's compressed and then not so wide that the o-ring is just completely loose the width is not as critical as the diameter and again just slowly sneaking up on it and checking the diameter with the calipers often i'm actually checking it a lot more than i show in here i edit out a lot of the checks with the calipers but you'll want to make sure you're checking it often enough that you don't overshoot it and make the diameter too small and my cutoff tool here is just a little bit narrower than the groove so i'm just plunging in a little bit and then cutting side to side to widen out the groove as I go along. So just cleaning up the groove here and then we'll stop the lathe and do a final check of the width and diameter and things are looking good here. So we're ready to move on to the next part of our nozzle uh, machining which is going to be the convergent section. So this is a 60 degree angle so we set our compound slide for that angle and we just start, start making cuts with the compound moving toward the chuck as we go along and that'll keep the angle at 60 degrees and we just keep making cuts until we get out to the diameter that we want which is pretty close to the full diameter of the face here. Then doing some polishing here again with some scotch bright, get everything all nice and shiny and clean up a little with some compressed air and then we're ready to take Take it out, flip it around. We'll take a minute to give it a look over, check out the convergent side, make sure everything looks good. Make sure everything is clean and doesn't have any chips on it and make sure it's ready to go in the other way. So we'll chuck it up facing the other direction and then we can start making the cuts on the divergent side, which will be the exit of our nozzle. So for this end, we decided we wanted an exit angle of 12 degrees. So I've set the compound slide for a 12 degree cut which I believe on my lathe I actually set it for 78 degrees on the scale um, because the horizontal position is 90 and so 12 degrees off of that is 78 at least on my lathe um, and then I pretty quickly realized that I would need a boring bar to get in there at this steep of an angle I wasn't going to be able to use my regular tool to get in there so I got a little boring bar I'll put a link to where I got that in the description just off McMaster car as well and hopefully a better angle here 
it was actually one of the most challenging parts of it was just seeing inside the nozzle where the cut was happening and you could kind of feel when you got to the end of the cut in the middle but it was really hard to tell how much you'd taken off as far as how long the throat still was and you'll see when I get to the end I actually go back and work on the other side a little bit to get the throat length down far enough so um, a flashlight helped I used a flashlight in here some to try and see down in there where I was making the cuts and this boring bar worked really well on the steel it has a carbide cutter there that sprays onto the boring bar so that cut the steel a little nicer than the high-speed steel bit I was using on the external cuts um, so again just uh, using the compound to keep it at 12 degrees and then moving the in this case moving the cross slide out as I went in with the compound to to make the cut gradually larger until I got to the diameter that I wanted and trying to go for a throat length um, that's acceptable so you want your throat length to not be too long or you'll lose efficiency in your motor what I've heard is you want your throat to be less than about half as long as it is in diameter so getting real close to finishing up here We'll blow this off and then take in one final pass uh, with the boring bar here. So I find I get the best finish if I do uh, two or three passes without changing any of the settings on the lathe. So I don't move the cross slide or the compound and I just take a cut in and then back out real slow as you can see here a couple of times and that makes a nice finishing cut. You're hardly taking off any material, but you can see as that bit comes out, it's really cleaning up the inside and making a really nice finish on that. Just going really slow like this. And then, of course, finishing up with some Scotch-Brite and making a really nice finish there. So now we'll start on the outside of our nozzle bell. And this is pretty similar to what we were doing on the inside of the nozzle. But, of course, we don't have to use a boring bar since we're on the outside. And we set the compound now to be at a 15 degree angle which in my case setting it to 75 on the scale on the compound and I started with this regular high-speed steel tool that I've ground and it was working pretty well but I wasn't able to get all the way down into the corner like I wanted to here on the extreme inside of the bell so I switched to this cutoff tool net it actually did a really good job a better job I think it's probably a little sharper than the other one as well and it's not taking off as much material each pass so that helps with my lathe being a little bit underpowered not taking off as much material material my lathe is able to keep up and not get bogged down with this smaller tool. So we have the bell pretty much how we want it so we'll just take some facing cuts here on the back of the closure part of the nozzle and just get that cleaned up so it's nice and flat and looks nice and then so we have a nice transition from that surface to the bell. And that mostly finishes things up. We could probably stop here and have a workable nozzle that would work in our motor and would produce thrust. But you can see here in these pictures our throat is still pretty long and we have a sharp corner there on the convergent section where it transitions into the nozzle throat. And that's not good for efficiency, I learned after making this nozzle. So I chucked it back up in the lathe and going to do some more work on the front side to fix those two problems. So here I'm just taking a little bit steeper angle on the entrance so that I can shorten up the throat a little bit. Again, this angle isn't critical. And actually having a slightly steeper angle will make our nozzle a little more efficient. And then finishing up with just a couple passes to improve the surface finish there on the entrance region of the nozzle. And I really like the finish I get with this carbide tool, so I'm using it for these finishing passes. Just going really slow again without moving anything, just to do some polishing there with the tool. The next step then is to cut a radius on the entrance to our throat. And one of the easiest ways to make an approximate radius is to cut bisecting angles. So our original angle was about 60 degrees. So here I'm cutting a 30 degree angle, which is half of that 60 degrees. And then here's a 15 degree angle and then a 45 degree angle. And those three angles together will make really close to a radius. And you could always go in and clean that up with the file if you wanted to have a smoother radius. But I think this will do just fine for what we're after. So then just going in of course and polishing things up, cleaning up with some Scotch-Brite. And that'll finish things off here for the nozzle here. Here's some pictures of our completed nozzle next to the forward closure and the case that we made before. And with that our motor is complete. At least the case for our motor. So I hope you enjoyed that. Next video we'll be pouring the grains.
and then after that we'll have our complete motor and we'll be able to test it. So be sure to subscribe to my channel that way you'll be able to see those videos as I make them and as I post them. Thanks for watching.